Alrighty. First things first, would like to apologize if I sound weird. I have a stuffy nose, a sore throat. I just, I feel like I'm gonna die. But, you know, that's basically a default setting for me at this point. So, yeah. Whatever. On to the review thing. So anyways, let's talk about Wolfenstein the New Colossus, the sequel to Wolfenstein the New Order, which as the subject of my last video you may know that I quite enjoyed. In fact, it's up there as one of my favorite FPSs of all time, only beat by Doom 2016. And the New Colossus, its sequel, I would like to say is a fantastic follow up Wolfenstein The New Colossus starts off basically where the last Wolfenstein left off. Well, technically it starts off with a little flashback and a sort of how did we get here, this is what happened of the first game. But it starts off with, at the very end of the game, with Mr. BJ Blazkowicz getting his, getting grievously injured by the General Death said who um, detonates a grenade right in his face in order to try and take BJ with him. Of course, Blaskowitz survives, as we know by the existence of this game, but he does so only barely, in which we're tr because we're treated to a scene where after picking which timeline we went through in the first game, they, he and the Chrysau Circle struggle to keep him alive, talking about how they are losing him and basically making it seem like BJ is just hanging on by the slivers of life. So yeah, that happens, and afterwards we are treated to a couple of like little scenes reminiscent of the beginning of the first game in the mental hospital, where he's not really a, he's barely aware of time passing by, and he gets these little bits of awareness where he is aware of the world around him, where people are talking to him, they're talking about what's going on. We learn that Anya, the love interest from the first game, is having a baby twins as she tells him later on and just how life is moving on but five months later he finally goes to full awareness when much like the first game he's put in a situation of combat this being that the u-boat they stole from the nazis is under attack by well nazis so he unable to walk gets into a wheelchair grabs a gun and starts mowing down nazis while in a wheelchair in a scene it's reminiscent of the first it's a uh, reminiscent to the first scene after the uh first encounter with general death's head except that in this case you are a bit more you are much more frailer in the when you begin the game due to the fact that Belasco it's you know ate a grenade at point blank range his health bar has been cut in half to 50 percent and this, um, I understand why they did this for, like, narrative reasons, to make it seem a bit more, um, to make it look, make a bit more sense narratively, but at the same time, I think they could have done without it. This is one of my first big issues with the gameplay of the game. Blaskowitz is incredibly squishy compared to the first game. It's almost as if the game is trying to make you go for stealth, but the stealth is incredibly wonky. It's incredibly janky. And I just fucking hate stealth, too. For, unless the game is devoted entirely to stealth mechanics, I have never found a game where it having like stealth mechanics as an option is something that I go for. I always come in guns a-blazing. But besides the point... So afterwards, you get on to the story. Your U-boat has been captured by the enemy force. You have to um, basically give yourself up in order to get close enough to some of your friends who have been captured in order to try to rescue them. But of course, this doesn't go exactly as planned. I say planned, but there really is no plan. And Caroline, the main leader of the resistance, is killed. And you're and the second in command either fergus or wyatt who you saved who you chose to save in the first game gets injured gravely and from there you meet a from there you end up getting caroline's little mechanical armor power armor which gives you um the ability to put on 
double the armor, exactly 200 points of armor, instead of the default 100, but does nothing to your 50 points of health, so it still feels, you still feel incredibly squishy. Blaskowitz, even in the in the gameplay and the story, Blaskowitz is constantly talking about how he's falling apart, how he's at the end of his rope, like he feels like he's gonna die, and playing him... It feels like a sh like it feels like an old man on death's bed inside of some fucking awesome power armor. For is if you can get 200 points of armor, you can just go in there and shoot the absolute fucking shit out of some Nazis. My gameplay style of run up with two shotguns and shoot everything in the face is still viable, but at the same time after that encounter you're gonna have, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm forced into sneaking at p through areas or just flat out running towards the next exact objective, shooting everything that gets in my way in the face, but for the most point, running towards my next objective first and foremost and trying to avoid as much conflict as possible in order to not die repeatedly. But yeah, as like, yeah, the story is, um, the story of Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus isn't as good as the first one, but I feel like it's a very close second. I rather like this story. So in it, after Caroline dies, you all go back to the U-boat, and you there's a bit of a kerfuffle against what are you going to do, Caroline, the leader of the Chrysau Circle, is dead, how do you continue, where... The second-in-command, the character who you saved, either Wyatt or Fergus, goes, Look, Caroline's next plan of attack was to go to America and get in contact with the resistance groups there and use liberate it and use that as a sort of tipping-off point to go to the rest of the world. Like, hey, the Nazis aren't fucking unbeatable. The Nazis are perfectly beatable. Get up your fucking asses and kill all the Nazis. So you head over, over to America where you, where it turns out that Caroline got in contact with this one resistance group in New York and you get there to contact them and there you meet um, Mrs. Grace and her group of people with her second in command Super Smash and they're like, they're communists basically, they're like, <coughs> fuck me. So you end up teaming up with this group of communists and there's this nice little, you know, this nice little back and forth between, you know, your characters and these commun and these communists, the British and the communist. And uh, one thing I want to talk about again, which I think this game improves on the first one, is just your little area you go to, your um, home base, the U-boat, the Eva's Hammer. There's a lot more people in here, it feels, and it's a lot bigger than it was in the first game, your little base of operations. When you get there and when you're talking to all these people, there are so many more NPCs having conversations, making it feel more lived in. The Eva's Hammer feels like a location where stuff happens, and this is one of the first games where I just kind of stopped for 10 to half an hour just listening to NPC conversations. And these aren't even NPC conversations like they say something and then your map, journal, inventory goes, hey, you should pay attention to that. No, this is purely flavor text and it was all interesting. These people interacting were all like fantastic. There's this one scene in particular that I unfortunately didn't grab any in, um, video of where Max Haas, the mentally incapacitated character from uh, the first game, and Seth, the, you know, Jewish Hebrew scientist person from that mystical society that has given the Nazis all of their technology, is playing chess. And, you know, he's like... I was like kind of sort of paying attention to them but kind of, like just looking at them playing chess and I was wondering okay is this something that's they're really going to be doing or are they just going to kind of like be pantomiming but no they were actually playing chess and eventually Max Haas wins and he's just like Max Haas and then Seth loses his fucking shit because like he's like this scientist person 
but Max is like this supposedly this mentally incapacitated individual, you know, from suffering from either some birth defect or some frilly fucking gnarly Nazi experiment. But he just loses his shit and literally flips off the table. And I believe he calls him a unthinking, idiotic golem. And it's just like, oh, it's this moment of characterization that I just love. And the U-boat is filled with these moments. I spent upwards to 30 minutes to an hour between uh, between missions just sort of walking towards each pair of people. Just talking to each other. Just talking to each other. And it's just great. It just gives it the big lived-in feel. It makes it feel like an actual place. But back to the gameplay. So you end up going to New York and you end up freeing the resistance from there and you travel from resistance play from you gather the groups of uh, it's I don't want to talk more about it because the story goes to some places and some rather surprising places like there were, were multiple times where I went did that just fucking happen and I was just like yeah that fucking happened like at one point, there's this point where you meet up with this group of, like, anarchists who are talking about how, like, the government folded to the, to, um, the Nazis and BJ, and BJ Blaskowitz, William Blaskowitz, your main character, just goes off on them, yelling at them about how, how, when he was in the trenches and in the war, they were handing out communist propaganda and how they talk about how you shouldn't go fight people with guns, you shouldn't you know, use violence, but here they are shooting Nazis like the rest of them, and he is just having this incredibly drunken spiel, just yelling at this dude in his face about who he's a fucking hypocrite and a moron, and it's just, oh god, it's great. But yeah, Wolfenstein, you know, just story-wise, I really like the game. It's not quite to the level of Wolfenstein 1, but it's definitely a close second. Now, as I already mentioned, gameplay is... Uh, it's a bit different this time around. First of all, there's the health. You are given 50% health. And let me tell you off the bat, you will enjoy this game much good if... Much gooder. Much better, is what I meant to say. If you just crank down the difficulty a level or two. Like, I'm serious. BJ is so freaking squishy in this game... That you either gotta save scum like a motherfucker or you gotta just run from objective to objective only ever discharging your gun when there's someone in front of you or fighting is inevitable. Or you can try and use your stealth but whereas in the first game I felt the stealth was um, a lot more viable in this game I don't know why. But for some reason, it feels like they've messed with, like, the enemy detection and, like, how their system works. Because they are much, much more... They have patterns that are much more... They feel like they cover... There are more enemies and they cover more ground, meaning that the stealth is a lot harder than it was in the first game. So, trying to get to the commanders first and kill them is very much more difficult than it was in the first game. Another difference in the game is, um, partway through the game you get access to this new piece of equipment which allows you to... You get a choice between three pieces of equipment. One that allows you to sneak into tighter spaces than you normally would. One that allows you to just Kool-Aid man your way through certain walls and doors and barriers and another that lets you um boost yourself up like they're like stilts that allow you that extend and boost yourself up to reach areas that you couldn't previously now these are a bit the way to describe these is that they do those options they give you a bit more options for traversal and they each play through a certain play style but the thing is that they also offer offer other upgrades that are not you know, are not, they offer other abilities that are not told when you're given the ability to select them. Like, um, for the constriction harness, one of the, one of the things it does is that when a Nazi sees you, they kind of recoil in horror first, giving you a chance to shoot them or like, you know, melee them to death before they can get off a 
trigger an alarm or such. And the ramshackles, um, you can actually, you know, run... Um, this isn't really surprising, you could probably tell, but you can sprint into enemies and either stun them, or in the case of the uber soldiers, the super soldiers with the heavy artillery, you can actually charge at them while they're charging at you and knock them out of that. And for your walkers, your little stilts, not only does this allow you to elevate yourself, but this also makes it so that when you kill other enemies, you gain a bit of health. So there are these other options, and uh, back to the ram shackles, the ability that allows you to ram through walls and such, that also gives you double the armor that you would gain traditionally from regular armor sources, but it also makes it so you regenerate a bit of your armor like you do your health and these all of these abilities are never told to you when you're given the initial selection and it's not like you can just go back and say hey i didn't like this one can i experiment with another one no you get one option and it only tells you the very basic function of it and it has no mention that it has other features so i feel like this is a bit of a missed opportunity gameplay wise i think you should have get it in you should have been given all three of these upgrades because this would have opened up the game much much more further but every one of these feels like a game changer i only have you know footage of the um battle walkers because it gives you a basically a life drain ability once you kill enemies and i'm all for that gaining more life thing but i experimented with the other two because i save scum like a motherfucker so i had a save a little bit beforehand which allowed me to experience them a bit and playing with those new tools just it changes the game drastically so yeah for the most part gameplay is the same as the first game another change that i noticed is that you can now dual wield two separate weapons which i actually rather liked one of my favorite things to do is like dual wield a silenced smg in one hand and a shotgun in the other for when i inevitably fucked up my stealth sections but another change they made is that unlike the first game where you had to like alternate firing between your guns, in this one you can fire both guns at the same time. So, you know, having a shotgun in one hand and just going in and just absolutely murdering everything is even more satisfying than it was in the first game. Another thing that changed in this game is the upgrade system. Instead of finding individual upgrades for your weapons, as in a actual single upgrade that does a specific thing for a specific weapon you find these upgrade kits and these of course you use to you know choose a specific upgrade for your weapon like they ch took out entirely the dual ammo types now it's just a flick of a button to change your ammo or in some cases to make your ammo permanently in such a way like in the smg you can find an upgrade that turns your smg ammo red hot which does a bunch of damage additional add damage or for the shotgun you find a upgrade that turns all of your bullets into the shrapnel type uh bullet type that was in the first game so yeah besides these choices and one single movement ability the game is largely placed the same as the first one the problem is that it feels, the enemies feel more, either they do more damage or they're a bit more bullet spongy. You get more of the uber soldiers, the super soldiers in armor and two heavy weapons a lot more. So I had found myself either running away from them or trying to cheese them as best as possible. Plus another change is the maps. I don't know if this is um, something they did after Doom when they saw how people like the more maze-like maps in Doom, but all of the maps in this game feel much more maze-like. But the problem is that unlike in Doom, where you had this 3D holographic map that I feel really, really explained where you were, in this game the maps are flat 2D and a very confusing to understand. So anytime I was in the game, I was just waving my gun around, wondering, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Where the fuck am I supposed to go? I was just internally confused. I was hammering that waypoint button constantly, trying to figure out where I'm going. But, um, like, the gameplay of this game is, it's, it hasn't changed a lot from Wolfenstein, the first, the remake, the new order, but at the same time, your character is much weaker with his half health, 
and since even if you have 200% armor, about, I want to say, a bit of that damage goes to your health regardless, you feel it. You still feel legitimately and a good bit weaker than you did in the first game, which ruins the experience somewhat. Like, I'm not saying this is a bad game. The gameplay, the gunplay still feels fantastic, but it feels like I have to be more careful. And considering my first, um, in the first game, my go-to playstyle was just go in there and shoot that goddamn Nazi in his goddamn Nazi face, it felt a bit like this game was less for me than the first one. Not to say that I didn't enjoy it, much like the first one, the story of this game is well worth the frustration I had with it. But up until partway through the game, where a kind of different partway through the game, that time you get your additional combat ability, that piece of equipment, the game feels a little less fun to play, but after that point the game becomes much more fun. <laughs> But, um, aside from that, there's also another change in which you get this sort of mini-map style place where you can choose optional side missions in combat zones to replace previous levels, which I feel is fun to an extent, but I would have preferred just the flat-out chapter select of the first game. It, this game doesn't have the ability to just restart the game from whatever point you want with all of your upgrades. So it just feels like it's... It feels like a step down from the first game. But as a point, um, huh. but regardless, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is a phenomenal game. I love it. I have played this game twice through already to experience both timelines, not that there was much difference, and also to play around with the two different armor sets. And I enjoyed both thoroughly. Like I said, they changed the game up a bit. But it's just, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is not the phenomenal masterpiece that Wolfenstein The New Order was. It is a fantastic game, but it falls short of the masterpiece, just the masterpiece level. If I had to give this a numbered review, I would give it a 8.5 out of 10, a borderline 9. It's a game that you definitely should pick up if you enjoy challenging shooters. But be warned that sometimes the challenge is a bit too much and you should really just drop down the level one or two pips. So you can thoroughly enjoy this game. As I feel Wolfenstein the old, the new order was enjoyed. Anyways, that's been my opinions, thoughts, and just general rant talky about Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, well, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and if you would be so kind, check out my Patreon and maybe drop a dollar or two if you enjoyed this and would like to see more videos like it. Also, I am currently doing a playthrough of Bloodborne, my fourth in a row uh, from Software Games, so I don't know why. Uh, that's that's a smart thing to do. I am a smart human being, you know, but yeah, just check that out. Links in the description to that and all my other social media and YouTube places. This has been Juan John John for Juan More Video. I shall see you all later. Goodbye.